All right, my amazing artists, now that we've learned about Bauhaus and Kandinsky and we've listened to the music, we're going to start our project. If you haven't listened to the music and answered the questions, please stop this video and do that now. So I have with me the answers to the questions that I heard or saw when I listened to the music. And I have my pencil, my marker, and then my coloring materials. So I chose to paint this project this time. But again, use whatever you have at home. If you have markers, crayons, oil pastels, paint, anything will work as long as it's a coloring material. Remember, you do have to color some of this project, okay? You can leave a little bit of white on this one, but you do have to have some colored areas. So we're going to start by looking at our answers. The first thing we want to do is we want to add some of our shapes and some of our pieces of our animal. Those are going to be the large areas of our project. Now yours is going to look different than mine because you have different answers than I do. So for instance, I heard a circle and a triangle and I heard a rabbit. You may have a square and a octagon and a horse. Whatever you have, that's what you're going to use. So I'm going to start by drawing in a few circles. And you can do this all over your paper. You can turn it tall, you can turn it sideways. Um, one thing Kandinsky would do is sometimes he'd keep his paper one way and then turn it to display it. So you may wanna do that too. So I'm just gonna off on one side of my paper, I'm gonna start by making a large circle. And then I think I'm gonna do another one over here on this side just to kind of balance it out, but I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna add a triangle because I have triangles on mine and you can overlap these. So I'm gonna have my triangle kind of come over this shape. And I'm not using a ruler, but you may use one if you really want to. And then I'm gonna do another triangle over here. And I think I'll do one more up here. Okay. Now I'm going to add some pieces of my animal. So I have a rabbit. So I want to think about what shapes I would see in a rabbit. So I have a circle for the head. I have some almond shapes or football shapes for the ears. Maybe um, I want to think about the shape of the body. And so I want to put some of those pieces around my picture. So I'm going to add, and you can do them to make them look more like an animal. Like I may wanna put one ear here so this looks like a rabbit's head or I might wanna make it completely abstract and just put it somewhere in my picture. So I'm gonna make an ear shape over here. And just so you know it's an ear, not an eye, I'm gonna do another smaller one on the inside. And then I'll do one over here like this and you can just put them wherever you want to. So there's my ear shape. I wanna add some rectangle teeth, like a rabbit's tooth. I think I'll do that up here. I'm gonna add some two rectangles kind of close to each other. Look like the teeth. Okay, so I have my teeth, I have my ears, I have a circle that could be the head. I have another circle that could even be the tail. Um, I could add some more shapes if I wanted to, some little paws maybe. So I'll make a little oval here. Maybe put little lines like it's a paw. And I could do that until I feel I have enough. You don't have to do too much. All right, the next one I'm gonna do is add my lines. So I heard wavy and diagonal lines. So I think I want my wavy lines to kind of look like whiskers. If you think of the whiskers of a rabbit. So I'm gonna make several wavy lines next to each other. So I'm gonna do one, two, three. And then maybe down here, I'm gonna do three more. One, two, three. So they look kind of like whiskers. I'm gonna add some diagonal lines to my piece. So I'm gonna come over here and make some diagonal lines. I wanna kind of fill this spot in. So I'm gonna make one that comes down, maybe one that goes this way. And I'm just kind of filling in some space with my lines and I can make more than one. I can have some that go 
in one direction and the other direction. I can cross them over. So I can put them however I want to. Maybe one coming up here and then kind of coming down through here just until my space looks full and interesting. And I think I'll do a couple more wavy lines, maybe a wavy line here. And I think I'll do one kind of coming this way, going through this circle. I like the way that looks, it's pretty full. So now I can go on into the last step, which is to add my coloring. So I wanna add some yellow, red, and purple to this piece. Before I do that, I'm gonna grab my marker and I'm going to trace the pieces I have. Now you can trace just like this with a single line, or if you look at the examples of Kandinsky, sometimes he would go in and he makes some really thick lines. So maybe I wanna take this one and instead of just tracing it once, I'm gonna make it really thick and trace it a few times. See the difference between the two? If you have a thin Sharpie or a thin color pencil, you can also trace those and make really, really thin lines. But go in and just try to trace your shapes and your lines and try to change the thickness of things so it's not all the same. All right, trace your lines. And then when you're done, we'll go back and we'll start adding your color. my amazing artist when you're done tracing everything I want you to go back and just look and see if there's anything that you'd like to add you can color some shapes in black if you so choose you can make some lines thicker you could add some things just to give it a little more interest so as I was drawing these lines in black I was thinking about adding some dots because I was thinking about the little tiny holes that are around where the whiskers grow out of so I'm just going to add a few areas where I have some dots like that just to make it even more interesting. You may want to take and make some shapes and things that are a color other than black and that's fine too. Now it's time to color. So I'm going to go back to my sticky note. Remember the colors that I heard were yellow, red, and purple. You may have different colors there and that's fine. So somewhere in my painting I want to have yellow, red, and purple. I can add other colors but I wanna make sure that I have those three colors in my piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out my paints and I'm gonna prep them real quick so I have them ready. So I'm gonna add some water to my purple and get it nice and runny like Kool-Aid. If you're using marker or crayon or oil pastel, then you don't have to worry about the water unless you wanna use water with your marker and make it look like watercolor, you could do that. So I'm just prepping those three colors, yellow, red, and purple. All right, so now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna look and see where I want to put those colors. Now I'm thinking I'm going to put some red here where my ear is. Just thinking about a rabbit's ear and usually the inside is a little bit more pink. Maybe I wanna put some of this yellow color in this triangle right here. And I just wanna show you a couple of things you can do and then you can color it on your own. Now, one thing I can do is whenever a shape crosses another color, I can mix the colors there to show that it's blending. That's one thing that Kandinsky would do a lot of is when shapes and colors would overlap, you'd see them mix. So right here, where this shape touches this color, I can kind of blend these two colors together and make this more of an orange tone right here. Okay, another thing that Condensi would do is around this white space where we'd have lines, he would actually make some color blends here too. 
So I can take some of my color and just where the line starts and I can kind of brush it out towards the end like this and just make some areas of color that blend into the background. If I'm using watercolor, I can easily just blend that with water until it kind of fades out. If you are using oil pastel, you can take your finger and you can smudge it. That'll help it blend. If you are using marker, you can use water to blend. If you're using crayon or something like that, crayon or color pencil, since you really can't blend that out, you can take white and you can mix white and the color and just kind of have a value change so it doesn't look so abrupt like it's just ending because he really likes to blend his colors. So that's it and I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to start coloring in certain areas until I have it the way I like it. Now this is one of those pieces that you can leave white space. It's okay to have white space in here, but it shouldn't be overwhelming. It shouldn't be the whole thing. Like this would be unfinished. So make sure that your coloring areas, you're coloring purposefully. And if you have white space, it's really balanced and makes the piece look like it's complete. If I were to leave this right here, this would look incomplete because there's still a lot of areas that I could add some color to. All right, my artists, go ahead and start coloring your Kandinsky's. my amazing artists, when you think you are finished, when you're looking at your piece and you think you have just enough colors in it, everything looks nice and complete and full, you can have some white space, but it's not too much white space, you are ready to upload a picture to the Google Classroom. Now for this assignment, you need to make sure that somewhere on your picture you sign your name and make sure it's kind of off to the side or the corner and not right in the middle of your piece. Once you do that, upload a picture to the Google Classroom. And there's one more step that you have to do for this project. Remember those answers to your questions? These need to be posted in Google Classroom too. So what you need to do is type your answers in the comment box on your assignment. You'll see when you go to turn in your assignment, there will be a little box off to the side that says private comments type it there in the private comments. Do not type it into the, um, the main comment for the, the assignment, okay? The other thing you could also do is if you've written them down like I did, you could always take a picture of your artwork and take a picture of your writing and post both of those pictures if that's easier for you, okay? But some way you need to give me the answers to those questions so I know that you did that piece and I can kind of compare and see what your interpretation was. All right, go ahead and put your name, upload a picture and put those answers in your private comments box. I can't wait to see how these turned out. <laughs> 